But uh, let's get back to it. We all right. <laughs> what was it doing? Any reason for using a uh, Trello board over just GitHub issues? Maybe get a project. Uh, I'm not using a Trello board. <laughs> I'll have you know. It is it is a GitHub project. In fact, I think it is linked if you go to projects on Glowing Telegram. Yeah. No worries. Yeah, for uh, quite a while, I think for a couple months, I uh, I had this planning board, but uh, it wasn't public. And I realized, I mean, it's open source project, I'm streaming it, so why not? Um, so yeah, it should be visible. And it has just kind of an assortment of like random ideas. There is a, there is one item in here that's kind of an overall, yeah, there you go, overall workflow. That kind of outlines what I want to do. Um, the draft stuff isn't an issue. That's true. Ah, yeah, I, I will, uh, open issues for anything that I'm going to recognize as a PR just to be able to link the item from the board to a pull request. And I have no labels <laughs> or any kind of organization uh, because I'm not really using this for like issue tracking so much, although there are bugs and occasionally things that I want to fix. But um, yeah, it's more of just like, what am I working on? Uh, just open issues for everything. Yeah. I, I do more of a when I'm getting ready to work on something, I'll convert it to an issue. Otherwise, I'll just leave it as a draft. Yeah, so each of those drafts will be an issue, for sure. I mean, I, I wonder if you could make it so that every time you opened an issue on the board, it just automatically created the issue. Um, oops. Workflows. Uh, item is added to project. No. Auto add to project. No. Generally do the other way around. Create issue and link it to the project in the sidebar when creating. Ah, sure, sure. Yeah, I, I spend a lot of... Um, like I work out of here. <laughs> like as you can see, I just like every time I have an idea, something to do, I just dump it into to do. Um, and then go from here out. I guess yeah, you could just create an issue, and then oh, you can see my other projects. <laughs> Those ones are not public. All right. Yeah, I don't know. It's 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 less of a oh I've come up with a system, uh, and more of a I just was like I'm gonna use pro GitHub projects to do this, and this is just kind of the way I did it. Uh, yeah, I don't know. All right, uh, moving on, moving on. So the next one is Stream Ingestion API. We have another two endpoints. I think most of these APIs will have two endpoints because we have one that is like the um, API that the front end calls and the other API is what the task worker calls to do the individual 
um, split um, like the individual units of work. Uh, what's an FFM probe? Uh, so I think this is my wrapper. Behold, a representation of uh, the FF probe output. Oh no, no, no worries. Uh, I mean, that is a welcome aspect of streaming, right? I mean, I could, I could work on this project and not stream it, but uh, having someone to chat with and having some distractions, it kind of, you know, breaks things up a little bit, makes it a little, um, a little harder to become like. Um, what's the word? You know, when you're just focused on one, uh, like tunnel vision on a thing. So I think I'm going to take this file. Hmm. So I could take this file and just dump it into API. I could um, make a separate crate. Hmm. Hmm. Is there a FF probe crate already? But does it do what this does? <laughs> Maybe mine's better. Probably not. Mine just calls FF probe, and then uh, it outputs JSON, and I parse it. <laughs> like most of it is just the struct defining the the how to parse the output. Okay, for the sake of like just doing something. Just gonna do this. Okay, what's in this cargo tomel? Anything special or different? Uh, nope. Okay, cool. All right, and then we have. You must poke start before you can poke catch. You did it. You got a squirtle too. <laughs> So then, <laughs> all right, do we have both of these things in our existing app state? One of them, I think. So the end of this, I'm gonna have to go back to the uh, Docker Compose and change some things around. And then in the Nginx settings, also change some things around, but that's a, that's a future me problem. wise I 
Let's uh, fold some of this, huh? So API find files. Um, there's a little bit more to this. Like if I look at the nginx file. Oops. Typo. It's a pretty deep nesting that's going on there. Nah. What, here? Yeah, I could probably do without the first one if I just put a slash API in front of everything or just not have slash API and and uh, have Nginx do that. Yeah, that's true. Let's do that. Let's make this a little simpler. All right, and then So when we call this, okay, so there needs to be a stream ingestion. Um, like I could just do this, right? I could just do that. Versus, you know, having an nested router. It is, it is kind of nice when I have like, you know, <laughs> several dozen things that are all nested under records to have them, you know, use app.nest. But um, maybe not for these other things. Okay, so we're gonna say this find files is gonna be in handlers. Um, call it stream ingestion. Of course, that doesn't exist yet, but it will. It will. Okay, so then we're done with that bit. Okay, handlers, new folder, stream ingestion. Hmm, actually no, no, not a folder. Stream ingestion.rs. Uh, my formatting is a bit weird. <laughs> if I format changes, would I even know to do that? Well, whatever, <laughs> sure. Uh, let's see, so this doesn't need to be public. Why would that be public? This needs to be public. And this too. Am I using Rust FMT as my formatter? see nope not in there how 
how does one see their formatters? For that matter, what if I just search for Rust FMT? Is that an extension I have? No. Hmm. What extensions do I have? Also, I need to update things. Rust. Let's see. Filter. Enabled. Rust. Yeah, it's part of Rust Analyzer. Okay, well, I have Rust Analyzer, as you can see. The current version. Hmm. <laughs> like I know if you um like if you were opening up if you have a file and you don't have a, a configured uh, formatter or if there are multiple and VS code isn't configured for one then it you know it does things but I don't know in a circumstance where um, you you have one how you would see what it is it's not something I've ever been like oh I need to figure out what what's going on there What are we complaining about? App state? Yep, there we go. And let's use the one from our crate. Usually put Rust, editor default formatter, wrestling. Yep, interesting. You think that? Do settings. Can I just open the file? Default formatter? Yeah. Modified elsewhere. Um, ooh, rest. Why is it so challenging to be able to just open the JSON settings? Ah, there it is. Yep. So what did you have? You had in square, bright. oh look, all sorts of things, rust. Uh, so many things. Uh, Rust analyzer? Pert? <laughs> Rust analyzer. There you go. Let's see what that does. Nothing. <laughs> Got some warnings because 
type find files query is more private. Interesting. Some of the brackets of the function calls were weird. The git handler. Oh yeah, and the, um, over here. Is it because they have word wrapping turned on? Is there a way I can tell uh, the formatter to enforce uh, 79 column width? <laughs> So, I can. Imagine if that was a website. We need a Tommel uh, TLD. <laughs> All right, so is that the stream ingestion API migrated then? We copied all that. All right, delete. Rust FMT Tommel in the root set max width 72. Let's let's see what that looks like. Um, generally, I'd want something a bit wider than that. Not too much wider. Uh, my thinking there is just that I do have a lot of real estate. Um, but I also want to be able to like look at code side by side, but when I'm streaming, I have things zoomed in much more than I otherwise would so that text is actually legible on the stream. Um, yeah, 100, uh, 79, please. What does that do? All right. So what does this look like? Uh, actually let's go to main. I feel like something changed there. What column is this? 74? Okay. I could take a look at what you used in your project. Uh, I think I still have that. There we go. Time about this one. Unstable features true, wrap comments true, format code and doc strings, format strings, import granularity, crate. Group imports, STD external, nice. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll yoink that. Look at that. So that might affect like how we are. That should be the same. That shouldn't change. I bet I have a file where things are. Huh, okay. Well, anyway. Uh, I need the settings that JSON in the project for that to work properly. Hey, Brainless. Good morning. How's it going? Hmm. And Rust FMT unstable Rust crate. Interesting. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay. Well, I think something to look at later. Let's uh let's keep marching on in our consolidation. Doing all right. Waking up. How am I? Ah, uh, good. I got my coffee. Uh, finished, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, just uh, doing a little bit of a reorganization today. So just consolidating all of these different API services into one <laughs> one thing. Uh, well, we're not changing task worker. So one, two, three, four. Four to go. So I think we're like halfway done. Uh, 
Um, so I'm pretty sure we have to add these. And then I think... Oh, and then feature WS. Uh, about double that many. I mean, we can just look in GitHub. Because we had one, two... Uh, this is the one that we're consolidating into. So we've done one, two... Um, this is actually empty. It doesn't count. Three, four. We've done four. And there's one, two, three. So yeah, we're we're halfway there. So there were about eight. Um, the Media Archive API and the Audio Extraction API actually were empty. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm getting rid of them. It's just, it's too much. Uh, let's see, there was something else that we needed a feature for Axum. Yeah, that one. Uh, we already had a regex tracing chrono, ISO 8601, survey. So I think that's all good. All right, and then we just have a Redis client that we'll need to merge into our app state. Let's imagine I could find where that was. There we go. So. can't do this, can we? Oh, uh, we need to use that expect. Ah. There we go. Okay, so then we need our routes. We have tasks and tasks colon record ID, tasks WS. Uh, and we're going to change this to be something like this. There we go. Oh, and here, and here. Of course, that doesn't exist, but I'll fix that here in a second. Tasks. Very, very sure. <laughs> very sure. Tasks.rs. Hey, Furiago. Uh, okay, so that's all the stuff from there. So I'm gonna get rid of that and copy the rest. And then I just throw away that file, paste that in there. Let's see what's broken. Okay, we don't need routing kits in this file. We do need import that. This needs to be pub. And the other ones probably also need to be. Remember to use the outline. Might make things faster. Oh, 
Oh yeah, to do <laughs> actually implement this. Uh, yeah, that's not implemented. Now there's that. Maybe I'll do that at some point when that's needed. All right, that went pretty well. Some errors in here. About what? Uh, create task input is private. Create task. There we go. How about now? Good now? <laughs> okay, so... That is another one down, I think. Goodbye, task API. That leaves us with uh, three. Oh look, I made an OpenAPI YAML for this one. Hmm. All right. Anything special in this versus our uh, main API dependency list? Um, Axim, Tokyo Survey, ISO 8601, Chrono. Hey, but this Chrono has the survey feature. Tracing regex temp file. And for request, yeah, those features are in there. Okay, so that's good. Um, and we just have a main file. So, first thing to do is bring over the state information. You just run cargo outdated at the end, not bothering to update the versions manually. That's probably a good idea. <laughs> I didn't know that command existed, so. Maybe I'll remember that in the future. Uh, let's see. I think we already have all of these. Test KPI URL, external, base, HTTP client, video storage path. Good. Um, which means that there shouldn't be anything significant in this. Might need to install it with Cargo install, Cargo outdated or something. Okay, well, we'll give it a try um, soonish. Uh, before I forget, let me get on a branch. This is this is issue number one hundred. Merge services. There we go. Uh, so we got some routes. Let's get those routes in place. This is going to be handlers transcription transcription C R I P T I O N. Found that momentarily very challenging. <laughs> there we go. So we'll create that uh, next. Okay. Hold on. Let me save myself some typing here. And then um, if I take that function out, I should be able to copy the rest of this, paste it over there, and uh, we'll do some fix-ups. I'm sure there's something wrong here. Don't have uh, import for app state. 
in my experience, a microservice architecture is almost never the right architecture to get started on a new project unless you are like Amazon or Google or something, probably not for all projects. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. Mainly, I was really interested in how it would work. Like the point of doing it was not that I thought it really made sense for the project to do it. I wanted to know what it might look like and just to try it rather than anything else. Um, which I think is something I, I've said multiple times through the project that like this is only going to really make sense if you have multiple teams that are working on different, like a much larger scale than a single person working on a thing. Um, the other consideration is like, um, there's still going to be multiple services because we're going to have a task worker. So that's going to be a separate thing that's going to run. And uh, I ha it's in a separate uh, pull request that I've not merged because I don't know if I'm actually going to end up doing it this way. But like I have a Twitch bot that's implemented with Elixir. Um, that would be, you know, if you have multiple languages, you're going to have that as well. Um, so I, I did want to enable me to be able to have like multiple services that are implemented in different languages. Yeah. That PR is still out there, Brainless, on the on the, the GitHub repo. But uh, I've got to say, I did take a shot at just implementing basically similar features, but with TypeScript and Node. It was much faster to do. Uh, Justice says, yeah, not even. That I would say more like once you have so many users that you need to scale beyond a single machine. I mean, yes and no. I mean, even with this, at, with a single service, you can just, as long as your, your backend is stateless, it's not managing state within the, the API layer, you can horizontally scale that. It's just going to depend on what's backing it, right? What kind of data store you're using, what kind of database and access patterns and a lot of other considerations. Yeah, reliability requirements or something, sure that too. But again, that that's I I don't think that's even necessarily like the difference between having one runtime that has all the API endpoints versus multiple would really be if like some of these APIs yeah performance wise why would it matter Like if you had something where you had certain API endpoints that needed certain kind of hardware, like some of these APIs um, use GPU to do things, right? And so by having those endpoints as a separate service, you can deploy that on the hardware uh, where you, the, you need to support that. And you can scale those things up if you're if we're again talking about a situation where you have the service deployed on multiple like VMs, hosts, whatever, um, and you're like load balancing across them, those sorts of things. That's not most projects. Uh, yeah, that's fair. I've I've worked on some of those kinds kinds of projects. Um, at at varying scales. Uh, but this application is just running on my machine <laughs> in Docker um, and is so very far from being a product um, and not even something that I've really entertained the idea of like a SaaS application, which is really where you're talking about uh, where that sort of thing matters, where you have, um, you want to kind of centrally host one thing for many users. Okay, you caught it. We've been having good luck today. All right, what are we what are we missing here? Oh yeah, that's not a thing anymore. Uh, more crates. Uh, we don't use that either. All right, I'd be interested to write uh, CUDA or I don't know what ROCM is. 
but back end for the Rust compiler at some time and run the project, uh, you linked being on a GPU. Oh, the evolutionary computation project? Yeah. Yeah, I would think that kind of like really parallel operation on a GPU could be a really good way to like do evolutionary computation. That seems like that could be a good fit. Just as, you know, in a, you know, <laughs> uh, a 10 second take on that. All right, what, what are we doing here? Uh, oh, it's private. Yeah, that, that seems to be a thing. Same idea in mind, yeah. Uh, again, outliner. Oops. I remember when I wrote my thesis using GAs, I was just starting coding and did it in Python. So slow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I've never written m my thesis, <laughs> but I've definitely done uh, like GA stuff, probably in Python at some point, and then in like JavaScript as well. I think I was mentioning it earlier to, to Justice that on my GitHub profile, I have uh, some, uh, it's called JSGA. I think it's still hosted somewhere. Uh, JSGA2. Ah, oh, that end up over there. Hold on. There we go. Uh, so many repositories. So little time. Ba, 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 ba. So there's JSGA with one star. I think there's... Is that not a separate repo? GA. Ah, there we go. Wait, why is JSGA updated on in 2018 and JSGA2 is updated in 2016? What does that mean? Uh, Justice says the current samples we have are 100x faster than the closure and uh, Python implementations. Uh, <laughs> we don't optimize anything in the, the project yet. Yes. Eight years ago. It's a rewrite. So, and it's hosted here. Is it still there? Oh, look. It's a bootstrap UI. <laughs> it's just an in browser GA thing, right? You give it a fitness function, and you can give a selection mechanism, and you can, you can populate. Behold. We did it. It's nothing really fancy. It's just kind of a uh, more of a uh, UI demo. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just it's just a uh, it's just JavaScript. It's it's a browser like it is just running in your browser, right? So this is just a, a C name pointed in S3 bucket. So it's gonna be there until Amazon goes away, probably, or until I stop paying for the domain. Uh, so the question is, why why is this one updated in 2016 and this, uh, what's up with that? Oh, someone opened a PR and I merged it. <laughs> okay, that's why. All right. Yeah, and you can give it a custom function. Which it's a good thing that this is front end only, and I'm not letting you submit custom, you know, just random JavaScript to a back end and running it. Yeah. 
Well, here you go. Here's a, here's a UI for a playground. <laughs> JSGA2. I think the original JSGA... I don't know if it still exists. Um, it does. Uh, it might be better UI, too. Eh, so-so. I think there might be more options. Why, why does the second version have less features? Wait, <laughs> this sounds familiar. And then you have past generations, statistics. Uh, Rust compiler almost works compiled to Wasm and make it fully work. All right, so <laughs> you could you could write your fitness function in the browser in Rust and compile it to Wasm and run in line. Is what you're telling me? Almost. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So those are public projects. Uh, oh yeah. So JSGA is written in CoffeeScript from 12 years ago. Remember CoffeeScript? In a folder called JavaScripts. Behold. <laughs> uh, because back in 2012, like for work, like our front end stuff was all, this is a past employer, not my current one, which I'm not gonna talk about my current one, uh, but past ones, um, we were doing, oh, it's Backbone too. It's CoffeeScript and Backbone. Um, I think we, we moved away from Backbone after 2012 uh, to Angular, if I remember right, AngularJS. Rather use ClojureScript, yeah, that's fair. Me too. I mean, CoffeeScript is dead, but um, I really like static typing is the thing. And I feel like that's not, um, there was um, core typed. I don't know, it just doesn't feel that there's, there's definitely more developer experience goodness on the TypeScript thing. You could use Dart. Have I even looked at Dart? I might have once long ago. Ooh, fancy. What does Dart look like? Looks like that. I was thinking something more lispy. If we're talking about closure script. All right, back to it. At least for a couple minutes. Yeah, Dart's another language. Yep. I knew that. <laughs> All right. So, uh, was this the one I just did? Yeah. All right. Transcription API goes away. And compiles to JS. And statically typed. Sure, sure. But... Why not just TypeScript then? All right, and then we have Switch API or Kotlin. Does, Co does Kotlin compile to JS? I've used Kotlin for some, um, it was Kotlin, right? For uh, Minecraft mod development, just like getting, like learning how to do that. That was uh, a few months ago. <laughs> was that was that before I started working on this project? It might have been like December. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, Twitch API. What's in here? XM.NV Tokyo survey ISO eighty six zero one tracing regex Redis. Do we have all the same? Why does the Twitch API need... Oh, right, we store the tokens in there. Okay. Uh, am I using NOM? Or why am I using ISO 8601? Well, I don't know what NOM is. <laughs> One. And two, uh, for... I think it's for parsing. 
or it might be for generating ISO 86. I'm using it somewhere. Hold on. We can we can find out. Like I'm using it here. It's meant to be used with Nom. Well, I've never heard of Nom. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Basically, I just needed something to, uh, <laughs> yeah. Much nom. Something to handle, uh, if you use survey chrono, yeah, exactly. It supports RFC uh, RFC three 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 nine. What is the difference between RFC RFC three 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 nine and ISO eighty six zero one? Um, the other thing is that in places I'm using ISO eighty six zero one durations, I suspect going off of nothing. The RFC three 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 nine doesn't handle durations. Oh, maybe it does. Maybe it does. At least it references it in the uh, uh, the B and F. Ah, this is the ISO eighty six hundred one collected A B and F from the nineteen eighty eight version. But is that part of RFC three 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 nine? I I want to say no, just because the only instance of the word duration in the body of this is when it's talking about how long a second is. I'd have to read this this whole thing. The question is. Um, could the chrono create certa support uh, parsing a duration? You know, we're talking about like um, like one one hour would be this, right? P one H, and an hour and thirty minutes is this. An hour thirty minutes and five seconds is this, uh, and five point zero one seconds is this. Yeah, I don't know, but uh, it was, I just looked for a crate, <laughs> variety, ISO 8601 and I found it. Um, there might be something better, I don't know. All right, Redis features, same features. Request features, same ones, redact, this is not alphabetical, is it? Okay. So I think uh, we got everything that Switch API needs in our existing cargo toml. So. Um, we need these things in our ever growing app state probably all need to be public okay i'm just going to start deleting these things out as i get them Some of that is going to be redundant and I'll have to clean that up, but uh, let's get that pasted in and then we'll get rid of, oh, um, I like an HTTP client that has a user agent better, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use that one. Okay. And then we 
just need the routes. Oh yeah, we need to fix the um, Nginx. There we go. We should have like silence detection in those routes. Like this. I mean, assuming, you know, I, I think I said up front that I wanted to keep the, the, um, oh wait, not, not silence detection. That's wrong, transcription. I wanted to keep the same kind of route structure so I don't have to change other things. So this is API Twitch. Oops. Okay, and then we do handlers, Twitch. All right, and then I gotta move that over and stuff, but uh, I'm gonna take a break here. <laughs> Making a, a decision between work and play. I'm gonna be playing some uh, some X4 myself after lunch, but I'll be back in just a couple minutes. Uh, Twitch wants to run an ad, uh, so Twitch gets what it wants. So I'll be back in just a few.